Okay, today we're going to talk about uh, the removal of proximally migrated stents. Um, we're going to focus on biliary stents. Uh, pancreatic stent uh, uh, removal is another topic. Uh, it's important to say that uh, pancreatic stents essentially never proximally migrate. Unfortunately, they are proximally deployed um, and that can be a real problem. But it's not actually that uncommon to find that either straight plastic or um, uh, uh, metal, particularly fully covered metal stents, uh, may migrate uh, proximally and it can be quite a headache to remove them. Um, so here's an example, here's a generic stent, I'm not going to discuss particularly whether it's uh, plastic or whether it's metal, but we're going to presume here that these, this is a, a straight stent. Most of the same rules apply and here is a choice of approaches uh, for uh, removing those uh, uh, that stent and I'm going to give you a, f uh, a few of my opinions as to uh, the relative uh, use of these and how to go about it. Okay so top of the list here is a balloon. Now actually you'll hear quite a lot of people saying that, that an approach to removing approximately uh, migrated uh, biliary stent is to put a balloon up beside the stent, uh, sorry put a wire up beside the stent, blow the balloon up um, either in the middle part of the stent or up here at the top part of the stent and pull down and the stent beautifully um, uh, gets drawn down into the duodenum as you pull back the balloon. It never works. Um, I can say that from my own experience over the years I have never seen that, that technique worse, work. All that happens is a number of things. You either just impact the stent uh, against the barred up wall or if you get any uh, downward traction at all, what you find is that at, uh, at the distal end of the duct, that stent just uh, impacts in the wall and uh, you, you just do not uh, uh, get you know, remove the stent in, in doing that. I think it is important to say that one wants to be sure that we've done our best to, to have the, um, the, the papilla as accessible um, for removal as possible. That may mean that, you know, following a previous sphincterotomy, you might wish to consider doing a, a balloon sphincteroplasty. Um, there is a real issue if the stent is, a, is above a stricture, uh, which can add to the problems. So first off, balloon. Forget it, does not work. Uh, the second option uh, is a, a snare or a basket. I'm gonna put those two uh, uh, together. Um, one can try freehand um, uh, insertion of the um, uh, of a snare or a basket, and then hoping to open the basket um, uh, with the, the the snare or the wires of the basket around the the, the lower end of that um, uh, that stent and closing on that and pull that out. That that does occasionally work. Um, uh, uh, another approach is that it's not actually that uncommon uh, to find that you can get, um, either by design or, or by sheer luck, um, that at initial cannulation that the wire may go up the middle of the, uh, of the stent. Clearly that's never gonna happen with a pigtail stent. Uh, it can happen if you're lucky with a, uh, a 10 French straight stent and it's actually, uh, you know, often, uh, not that difficult to achieve with a, uh, a metal biliary stent. Um, but with, if you manage to get a wire up the middle of a uh, 10 French plastic stent, then what one can do is, and this is uh, at the uh, endoscope end, the wire um, uh, is uh, down the working channel of the duodenoscope, of course, and you then pass the snare um, this is the snare and this is the, the, the catheter uh, for the snare over the wire, okay? And you then pass this with the snare almost completely um, uh, uh, closed and particularly choosing a 10 or a 15 millimetre um, uh, polypectomy snare that has a, a slight nipple at the end. That can be particularly useful. You then lightly close that so that the wire is running through that, that um, small um, 
the tip of the snare and then uh, when one has passed that uh, the, the, the catheter uh, into the, uh, uh, the bile duct one then opens the snare uh, in the hope that, that that loop will then curve over the, um, uh, the, uh, the, the stent. So the stent is like this, the wire is within the stent and then when we open the, um, the snare what we want to see is that that then um, uh, loops around the snare you can then advance your the, 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 the snare catheter and then close the snare and that can then be a very effective way of then pulling that uh, stent back out um, uh, into the, the, the duodenum and then uh, you can then either just uh, take the snare through the duodenoscope or it's quite difficult to do that through the 10 French uh, a 10 French stent through, a, through the therapeutic duodenoscope but once the distal end of the snare uh, of the stent is in the duodenum um, then you can use any standard technique to, to complete the job from there. Um, so I think that this technique of a snare or a basket uh, with or without the wire is actually uh, quite useful. Um, another variation on that um, is that if you have done your initial cannulation uh, with a sphincter, a tome and a wire, you've managed by luck or design to get the wire inside the lumen of the, uh, the stent and then if you can carefully pass the, uh, the sphincter tome uh, into the lumen of the, uh, uh, the, the stent, one can then put a uh, hard bend on the tip of the sphincter tome which allows it just to grab the, uh, the uh, internal lumen of the stent and then you can sometimes then draw uh, the sphincter tome out and it will catch the, the, the stent. So I think that's, that's a technique that uh, can be worth trying. Um, uh, so we like, like this, like this, don't like this. Um, uh, and the other technique is, is good old fashioned stent grabbers. Now, um, I think that this technique is um, particularly effective where the, 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 the distal end of the stent is uh, only a short distance above the ampulla. Um, I would be less, uh, much less keen to, to use this technique if the stent has migrated right up uh, around uh, and the, you know, the distal end is up here somewhere. But you often find that these stents have, have disappeared just a little way in and then um, uh, one can use stent grabbers. The only thing I would say about this is the orientation is uh, quite often difficult. And the reason for that is that the, uh, the, the stent grabber is a stiff instrument and it's quite difficult to lift it um, uh, significantly with the, uh, uh, with the bridge of the duodenoscope and so there's a tendency for it to come out quite flat um, and so and, and one needs to be very conscious of the pancreas, the pancreatic duct and also the fact that if you want to grab this stent you need to be, um, uh, you know, the stent grabber needs to be advancing in this direction um, and um, difficult to be specific uh, just on a whiteboard, but one really wants to try and get below as much as one can um, and in order to be able to pass that stent grabber uh, upwards and avoid it just going laterally. Um, so that, that can be tricky. But if, uh, again, under fluoroscopy and a lot of care, um, if one can open the stent grabbers and gently advance uh, onto the stent, um, you have a reasonable chance of closing the stent grabbers and, and grabbing a bit of that, um, uh, you know, grabbing the, the, the distal end of that, uh, 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 that stent and then drawing it out. So I think that's very much uh, a technique uh, worth doing. And we've got a little video of, of using that technique for uh, the removal of proximate, approximately migrated um, uh, metal biliary stent. Uh, and finally, uh, spyglass, if all else fails, I think cholangioscopy is uh, uh, 
almost always succeeds. And the reason for that is, is twofold, really. Um, you can obviously have a uh, direct three-dimensional uh, view of the migrated stent uh, as opposed to the two-dimensional view uh, that we, uh, we have with ERCP alone. So one of the problems, obviously, with fluoroscopy is that uh, you know, we, we don't really have any, uh, any way of, of uh, interpreting uh, uh, a two-dimensional view of the fact that the stent is over here and we're opening our, you know, with the, if this is the lumen and this is the stent, you know, we're, you know, we're opening our stent grabbers here and obviously uh, you know, we're not actually uh, impacting on it. When you, when you approach it with spyglass, you can see exactly um, where, the, where the stent is and then there are now a number of uh, techniques that can then be used. Um, you can either, uh, under direct vision, pass a wire into the lumen of the stent and then you come back to these techniques. You don't normally need to do that once you've got direct vision because other techniques include using um, the uh, so-called spy bite max biopsy forceps and you can often grab the the end of the uh, the the 10 inch stent, if that's what the problem is, or you can grab the um, the the distal end of a metal stent. Um, that's usually very very effective. And then of course you draw you draw the stent down as you pull back on the uh, the spyglass uh, scope. Um, uh, and there are other bits of kit. There is a there is now a spy uh, snare. Uh, which again you can use under direct vision to put around the stent, close the uh, close the stair, and then same technique of removing the uh, the spyglass scope back into the duodenum, uh, and similarly a, a spy basket, uh, which uh, can be used to uh, um, to be closed around the distal end of the uh, uh, the stent. That's particularly of relevance for uh, smaller seven or ten French plastic stents, um, less easy to do around a uh, a 10 millimeter diameter metal stent uh, within the bar boat. Um, okay, so I think that those are the, uh, those are a few uh, comments uh, about removing uh, proximally migrated uh, uh, biliary stents. Um, and, um, you know, we've got some videos on the gastro learning site um, to give a few more uh, uh, tricks and tips in that regard. Thanks so much.